Hello everyone, today I'm going to go down the road of polygon triangulation. And this is going to be a tutorial that I'm writing in C Sharp using Monogame as well as a custom library that I've created to get the um, results on the display. But I'm going to be writing this in such a way that you can definitely transfer the code very easily to any other language that you may be using. We're not only going to uh, talk about how this algorithm works, but we're going to go step by step and write each piece of code for how to triangulate um, polygons. Now, if you want more information about the flat library, you can see that in our solution explorer over here. Here are the files that I have in my flat library. Uh, this is code that we have written beforehand, and I have a series of videos. So if you want to see how this was written, you can go to my channel and look at all the previous videos. I have it written out step by step each one of these files and how we wrote this code. Uh, if you just want the code itself, you can also go to uh, GitHub under flat asteroids, uh, under 2-bit coder flat asteroids. I have this flat folder that will have all of the code written out and ready to go if you want to use it under the MIT license. Feel free to go back and check out any of the previous videos if you have questions about how I implemented different things. Uh, for example, line, we, we handle line drawing, we handle sprite drawing, uh, drawing batching and drawing shapes a camera class for creating a two-dimensional zoom effect and all of that stuff. But let's talk about a general implementation of this algorithm. Uh, first of all, we're going to need to provide vertices uh, that define either a convex or a concave simple polygon. And a simple polygon has a few rules to it. First of all, uh, vertices are defined in order and connected by an edge. So as we go from one vertex to the next, we are going to connect them by an edge and then move to the next vertex and connect that one with an edge and so on until we get to the end. And then we'll connect the last vertex to the first vertex with an edge. Uh, secondly, every vertex will have exactly two edges. We will never allow uh, a third or a fourth or a fifth edge to come off of a vertex. They will all have exactly two edges, just like you can see in this example. Uh, no edges are going to intersect, so we would not allow a polygon that looks something like this. Where you can see right here in the middle, these edges intersect, so this will not be allowed. Uh, also, we are not going to allow polygons that have holes. Basically, we have an exterior polygon here, which is valid, but the interior polygon which defines the hole would not be valid. All right, so we could uh, triangulate the external one, but the hole would not work. And then finally, the last rule that we're going to apply is that we're not going to allow consecutive vertices to be collinear. You can see that these three vertices here are actually collinear. Uh, this is something we do not want to allow, so the interior angle here is exactly 180 degrees. The vertices are either going to be convex, uh, so here's an example of a convex vertex where the angle is less than 180 degrees, or the vertex is going to be reflex, like this one, which is the vertex, the interior angle of the vertex is greater than 180 degrees, and that is okay as well. But we will never allow exactly 180 degrees, meaning that three vertices in a row uh, define a straight line. This will not be allowed. All right, but other than that, as long as it is a simple convex or concave polygon, uh, this will be allowed and we'll be able to triangulate it. And let's talk a little bit about winding order. I'm going to be using a clockwise winding order just because that's more intuitive for me. Uh, so I'm going to ensure when the algorithm starts uh, that the vertices are written in a clockwise winding order. Now let's get into the basic idea of the algorithm. What does this, how do we use ear clipping to triangulate a polygon? Well, we just start at the first vertex and we start determining if that vertex defines an ear. If that vertex does define an ear, that means we found a triangle and we're going to add that over here to our triangle list. So let's take a look at this over here. We want to check the first vertex and see if this defines a, an ear of the polygon. Well, there's two things that we need to check. First of all, is this angle convex? If this angle is convex, we've passed the first text and we have a possible ear that would define a triangle we can add to our list. Now, the second test is we need to now get the, the previous vertex and the next vertex and make a triangle out of this. So we're just going to connect the previous vertex to the next vertex and make a triangle out of it. 
and then loop through all of the rest of the vertices in the polygon and determine if this triangle contains any of these vertices. So if any of these vertices are inside of this triangle, that means this is not an ear. Okay, so we can't use it. But looking at the picture, you can tell that none of the other vertices are inside of this triangle. And so we've passed the two tests. This is a convex vertex, and none of the other vertices are inside of the triangle. So this is a valid ear and a triangle that we can add to our triangle list. And so in clockwise winding order, we are just going to add these vertices to our triangle list. And so we'll start with eight, and we'll just add it in order. So eight, uh, zero, and then one. So eight, zero, and one. And we have our first triangle. We have found a valid triangle that uses that vertex as the vertex ear. We no longer need it in our index list for testing, and we can remove it. And so let's just go ahead and erase that out of our list. So that one is done. And then we're just going to connect these two vertices here. Now we can just go back to the top of our li index list and start testing again. We're going to start at ver the top vertex in the list, and we're just going to go down and try to, to find a another ear. And so we're at vertex 1 now. Uh, the first test, we determine if this vertex is either convex or reflex. In this case, you can tell that this vertex is definitely reflex, meaning that it, the interior angle is greater than 180 degrees, and so this cannot be an ear at least not yet, and so we're just going to stop testing there and move on to the next one. So let's go to the next vertex, which is 2. Uh, here we see that, yes, this passes the first test, that this is a convex angle, but uh, let's go ahead and now test to see if the triangle formed by the previous vertex and the next vertex contains any of the vertices in the polygon. And so here's the uh, previous vertex, is vertex number 1, and we're going to connect that to the next vertex, which is vertex number 3. And um, as we loop through and check to see if any of the vertices are in this polygon, we can clearly see that, yes, it contains this vertex from the polygon, and so this cannot be an ear, so we are not going to use that one. So we were on vertex 2, let's move on to vertex number 3. Well, vertex number 3 is definitely convex, so that works. But let's go now go to the previous vertex and the next vertex and form a triangle and determine if this is a valid ear. And as we look at this, we can see that there is a vertex contained in here from the other vertices, and so this cannot possibly be an ear. And so let's just move on to the next one. We go on to vertex number four. Uh, this vertex is convex, and so it passes that test. So we're now going to go to the uh, previous and the next vertex from vertex four and form a triangle. And as we form this triangle here, we can see that no other vertices from the polygon are contained uh, in this triangle. And so this passes both tests, and this is now an ear that we can add to our triangle list over there. And so let's just go in clockwise winding order, and let's add this to our list. So we have vertex number 3, 4, and 5. So we'll just add that to our triangles list. So 4 and 5. Vertex 4 can be eliminated from our list because we've already found an ear from that vertex. And erase it from this picture as well. There we go. And then we'll just form a line here because now vertex 3 and 5 are the next consecutive vertices in the list. So now that we've added a new triangle to our list, we're going to go back up to the top here in our index list. Let's start at the first one again. Well, number vertex number 1 is still not a valid vertex. Uh, vertex number two does have a convex angle, but uh, let's see if we can form a triangle here. So we've got vertex one and vertex three. If we make a triangle out of that, vertex five is still contained in there. So this is not a valid ear vertex. So let's move on to vertex number three. So as we get to vertex number three, uh, the previous vertex is number two. The next one is vertex number five. And let's make a triangle out of that. And you can see now that no other vertices are contained in this triangle, so this is indeed a valid ear. So we're going to now move the triangle data over here. So we have vertices 2, 3, and 5. So this will be 2, 3, and 5. And we're going to eliminate this from our list. So let's just go through here and get rid of vertex number 3. That was a valid ear, and we don't need it anymore. And you can see now uh, vertex 2 and 5 are connected, right? 
So let's go ahead and go down our go back to the top of our list. Let's start testing again. Well, vertex one is still a, a reflex vertex, so we can't use that one. Uh, vertex two is a convex vertex, so that one works. Now let's form a triangle using the previous vertex, which is number one here, and then the next one, which is number five. And now we can see that this triangle is indeed valid because it does not contain any points from the rest of the polygon. And so let's move this information over to our triangle list. And so over here, um, I'm just going to actually go back over here and let's start making the list over here now. So we have vertices one, two, and five in clockwise winding order. So one, two, and five is our next triangle. And we've determined that vertex two is a valid ear and we've added the triangle. So now we can just remove it from our list. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And vertex two is removed from our list. Okay, we're gonna start at the top of our list again and we're gonna try and create a a new triangle. Um, it looks like now vertex one is convex, uh, meaning this angle here, this interior angle is less than 180 degrees. So we should now be able to use this as a possible ear or triangle we can add. So we're gonna go and get the previous vertex, which is vertex number eight. So that'll be here. And then the next vertex, which is vertex number five here. And let's make a triangle out of those vertices. And so that would look something like that. And while it is a thin triangle, it does look like a valid triangle. And so now vertex number one is a valid ear and we're going to add that to our list of triangles. In clockwise winding order, we have ver vertex eight, one, and five. And so we have vertex eight, one, and five. Uh, vertex one is the ear vertex. And so we can just remove that from our list. Uh, we'll get rid of that here. And then you can see um, the last and first vertex in our list here is eight and five. So those two should now be connected. But let's just go back to the top of our list. Vertex number five is the one we're testing. So that is a convex vertex. So we are good there. Uh, now let's do the next test. We're going to connect the previous vertex, which is vertex number eight, uh, to the next vertex, which is vertex number six. And so we can add that over here to our triangle list. So let's go in order, starting with uh, eight, five, and then six. So we're gonna have eight, five, and six. Vertex five was the valid ear vertex, so I'm going to remove that from our list, something like that, and take it out of our list. We only have three vertices left in our list. Once there's only three vertices left in our index list, we are all done. We just add these three vertices to our triangle list, and we are we are done and the algorithm exits and we have a list of indices that define the triangles that define our polygon divided into triangles. And I can draw lines here just to divide these by three into the three different parts. And you can see we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, triangles. So our polygon over here had nine vertices and we ended up with seven triangles. And this is always the case. This ratio of vertices to triangles will always be the case. And it's not exactly a ratio. It's just, it's just a truth about dividing a simple polygon into uh, triangles. The number of triangles you get will always be two less than the number of vertices. So we can write a formula here. So for triangles, the number of triangles is equal to the number of vertices uh, minus two. And we're gonna use that uh, in our triangulation algorithm to figure out how big does our array need to be to store this number of triangle vertices. But that's it for the basic algorithm. In the next video, we're going to get into the actual code of the algorithm.